Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, my dear students of honors part, part three. In our previous two classes, I was I was telling you the story of Robinson Crusoe, and today I will continue telling you the story of Robinson Crusoe. And in our last lecture, I told you that Crusoe collected. A number of things from the drowned sheep, which was stranded near the sh near the shore, and today I will uh, begin my lecture uh, with with the description of how Crusoe built a habitation in an uninhabited island. Crusoe now proceeded to build a proper habitation for himself. Choosing a suitable spot close to the seashore, he built a hut with a strong fence around it. Soon afterwards, he dug a cave into the rock just behind the hut. While the hut would serve as his house, the cave would serve as a, as a cellar to the house. Then he took measures to keep his gunpowder dry against the possibility of rain and lightning. All this work took him many weeks and involved much arduous labor, in other words, hard labor. In the intervals of time when he was not engaged upon any he was not engaged upon this task, he went out once every day with his gun in order to kill a wild goat for his food or to acquaint himself a little more with the island. And, and, uh, and now let me uh, tell, uh, tell the, the feeling of Crusoe that is Crusoe now in a state of helplessness and let, let us see the tears of distress in the life of Crusoe. Crusoe's situation on the island was by no means enviable. He had been cast away upon an island, hundreds of miles away from the ordinary course of the trade of mankind. It seemed that he would have to live and die on this desolate, desolate island. Tears began to flow from his eyes at the thought of the affliction which had overtaken him. However, he found some comfort in the realization that he was far more fortunate than his companions who had all perished in the sea. And, and, and let, uh, let us see uh, the means of survival on the island on the part of Crusoe. It was on the 30th September 16, 1659 that Crusoe had first set foot upon this dreadful island. In order not to lose his sense of time, he devised a sort of calendar by means of which he could keep track of the passing of days and weeks. As time passed, Crusoe tried to provide himself with all those amenities which it was possible for him with the tools and materials at his disposal to devise or to invent. For instance, he made a table and a chair and he provided an additional fortification to his habitation as a sort of defense against any possible intruders such as wild men or wild beasts. Having casually shaken some grains of barley and rice out of a bag, he was amazed one day to see a few ears of corn growing from the earth. From this experience, he learned that he would be able to grow both barley and rice on the island with the seeds which he obtained from this accidental crop. In course of time, he put his plan into practice and began to obtain a regular production of both barley and rice from the soil which he prepared for the purpose. 
and now uh, le le let, let us uh, now we will find Kusho in an illness and a spiritual development in him. One of the most agonizing experience on the island was an illness which Kusho suffered. This illness lasted several days. During the illness he saw a terrible dream in which a man descending from a cloud moved forward with a long spear in his hand to kill Kusho. On waking up from his dream, Kusho thought of the advice which his father had given and which he had disobeyed. He now realized the need to appeal to God for help and he then offered an earnest prayer to God seeking God's grace and mercy. When Kusho recovered from his illness, he made it a practice to read a few pages from the Bible every day. And now uh, we will find that Kusho is in no shortage of food and a number of pet animals uh, reared by Kusho. Kusho often traveled over the island in order to explore it. In the course of his exploration of the island, he found a certain reason where grew fruits of all kinds. He found an abundance of grapes which he dried, thus making raisins from them. The raisins could last for a long time and serve as a very nourishing as well as very delicious kind of food. He also built in this part of the island a bower to serve him as his second habitation. Thus now he had one house on the seashore and another in the inner part of the island. Crucio now also learned to weave baskets from the twigs which he could easily cut from the trees. Nor was he short of food now. The meat of goats, pigeons and tortoises was available to him in plenty besides an abundance of raisins. He had uh, brought a dog and a couple of cats from the sheep and he had caught a parrot from the island. He taught the parrot to talk, though it took him a very long time to do so. He also had among his pet animals a young kid around the neck of which he had put a collar. And uh, my dear students, we will take a bit longer. Uh, we will need uh, two, two more classes to finish their story and I hope that you are enjoying the story of Robinson Crusoe and uh, and with the wish of your betterment and physical and emotional well-being let me wrap up the discussion for today thank you very much for listening